This episode of 1v1, the creator interview series, is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support this show and the Boss Rush Media family of podcasts, head over to patreon.com slash boss rush media or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Hello, everybody. Welcome to 1v1, a special edition. I'm your host, the Enlightened Insider, Eddie B. Joining me is one of my besties. You know, you guys, he's one third of the founders of Boss Rush Media. He has been away for a long time, but if you guys have seen him on the Boss Rush podcast and After Dark, you know who he is. We love him, we miss him. Everybody, it's the wise Wisconsinite himself, Mr. Jesse Douglas. Hello, good sir. Hey, Ed, how's it going? It is going well. Uh, you are serving body. You are looking good. You got smiles. I'm so happy to see you again. Hi. Hey, yeah. Yeah, um, life has, has definitely gotten quite a bit better <laughs> since, you know, <laughs> even a couple of months ago, but. But yeah, if you've, uh, yeah, like I said, if you've listened to the After Dark where we kind of talked about, you know, my divorce and I got some pretty, pretty, pretty uh, deep detail about, you know, what I was going through and stuff. And, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of things yet that, that I got to work on, you know, because of some of the stuff I've went through. So, you know, but that that'll come in time, you know, like I, it's it's funny because like I I don't I don't want to be in a relationship because I'm enjoying being single, but at the same time I want to be. But I it, you know like it's just a you know and I know it's just you know that's the thing. It's just a, it's gonna kind of be a a back and forth thing. But it's it's best for for right now that I probably just kind of stay you know worrying about you know life and. And you know, fixing fixing things and and uh, working on myself a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm not gonna shy away from things if an opportunity comes up, but I'm not. I'm just not really looking. You know, and sometimes that's the best way. You know, as you find find someone when you're not looking. So I just yes. wanna wanna enjoy time with the kids and and just be be happy again. So. Yes. Well, everybody, we are kind of going to be talking to Jesse about, you know, his comeback to Watchfish Media uh, slowly. You know, it's mm-hmm. all in due time and things that he wants to do. And we'll probably end up talking about some gaming because it seems that Microsoft may be on the roll and may actually have a game of the year contender this, this year. It's going to be very interesting. Um, so before we get into that, speaking of relationships, why are you trying to stay single and I'm trying to find somebody? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, mean, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not easy because it, it's really, I, what's really tough. Cause you know, like I have, you know, dabbled a little bit and like, you know, like uh, too soon, you know, like, mm-hmm. But, but, uh, the, the whole dating app stuff, it's, it's really difficult because like, you know, like you most, I feel like, you know, most of the people on those, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell if they're just trying to look for hookups or, you know, like, unless they literally say like, there no hookups, you know, I'm looking for real stuff. But at the same time though, there is like a inherent uh like it gets a little judgy you know yeah. like I, I think i think people get a little too judgy with looks and and things like that and you know like i because and the only reason i say that is because some of the people will literally just put pictures of themselves on there and then nothing about them you know like that's good enough i i look good that's good enough you know like no 
no, it's not, that's not good enough. I, I want to like know something about you and like, yeah, I mean, the idea is, is you want to, you do want to try to hook up with someone and, and get to know them, mm-hmm. you know, like not hook up like a, as in hook up, but I mean, you but know, get together, date, whatever. Like, but, but at the same time though, you, I still want to have somewhat of a jumping point to know like, okay, is this someone that I would be interested in? Because the looks aren't, aren't, you know, the looks are looks. I mean, once you get older and those, those fade, I mean, you know, what keeps a couple together is, is the personality, you know, like, and the end. right. So I don't know. It's, it's just, it's, it's not, it makes it, easy to look and find out what's out there but at the same time it doesn't really it doesn't really work the way it's intended i don't think because there's but, also people that go on there fake stuff and whatever you know well i, I think for me i i kind of want to have like i guess it's that like dating dinner thing where people come like singles come yeah. together and have a, oh, a yeah. date dinner speed dating what, Speed dating. I want to try that, and I want to see. Yeah. And and I think I want to do it to see what can I learn about myself, and what things do I need to work on. Like, is it the conversation? Because yeah. I I don't think I have a problem with conversations as many podcasts that I host yeah. and have and stuff. But like meeting somebody and having that connection do we have it or do i not like what things about myself that i would love that i would need to work on i think speed dating at least would give me an idea not say that it would fix anything but it would give me an idea um because like we are oh go ahead oh i was just i was just gonna say yeah i i i've kind of thought about i would like to try that too but you know, like, I, cause, and I, I've, I've said this like on my social media or whatever, but like, I haven't really talked about it too much on the show, but like, I, I remember when I first started, when I first joined you guys and, you know, I was nervous and because like, I, you know, like I really, I love to talk to people and I can talk for, you know, hours with people right. once I'm comfortable, comfortable, but it honestly, it took me a lot of pushing myself um, out of my comfort zone my whole entire life because I, I'm, I, you know, like originally am very, very bad at like social, like I have social anxiety and like, you know, really difficult for me to, to, you know, socialize with, with people um, mm-hmm. and talk to people that I don't really know very well but I, I it was years and years and years of pushing myself out of my comfort zone because though I had social anxiety I really wanted to you know like connect with people and you know and talk about things that I like and that people like and you know and, and so yeah like I I had to push myself out of my comfort zone for so long and that's kind of I think what that does you know like the speed dating it, it's mm-hmm. not it's not normal. (laughs) It's, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not exactly a normal way to meet someone, but it does kind of, it's almost like a, like getting to repeatedly worry about your first impression with multiple people all in one night, you know, like it's about that first impression and, and, you know, like what, yeah like you said i think what you would learn is okay like how was i how was i you know putting myself off of as my you know what was i doing for this first impression like what what worked with some of these possibly and what didn't you know like yeah you're kind of like almost tweaking like how how you approach someone you know in a sense. yeah right if you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., 
Sana Dirig, Francisco Santelan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. Well, Jay's, I, I kind of want to ask, you know, uh, now that you're like slowly coming back to Boss Rush or doing things with on Boss Rush, what would you personally like to do? So, yeah, like I, I we kind of, me and Corey have kind of talked and, you know, we've got some stuff out there that it's, it's just kind of like the rough you know, like rough start to it, but you know, and we put it as like the, 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 it's almost like a pod and play or, you know, like just kind of doing like playing games. Like, and we kind of want to take the stuff that we used to do, like the Royale with cheese and, and, um, you know, squad goals and stuff. And we kind of wanted to do that kind of stuff, but mix it with, like xbox talk since Mm -hmm. you know like you know like i mostly play on xbox and Corey for the most part he kind of jumps around but he he admits like lately it's been kind of focused on xbox and and he still tries to play you know like his switch and and he's playing his ps5 and stuff which you know i i have all three of them as well but you know i've always just kind of been more of an xbox driven uh gamer and and so yeah we kind of you know with us not really having arsenal x anymore you know that would give us a chance to still talk about xbox Mm -hmm. but also get to play some games and have fun while we're doing it you know on on that level as well um because you know like we i missed you know and Corey missed and i'm sure you miss like those squad goals where we would play play games together and just yes. kind of have fun with it. So, you know, like it, it's giving us a chance to, to do that stuff again and, and also talk about Xbox um, a little bit, you know, since we and don't it, really have Arsenal X. Yeah. And it's weird. Cause I, I know Arsenal X, like we, we put it on hiatus and thing and we kind of merged it with Crossroads it was getting to a point and Nintendo's kind of experienced this or just video games in general that the news for video games has, have been hard. It's been hard to find. And with Xbox, you know, kind of being quiet for a couple of years, uh, just now, like a lot of series S's and series X is coming out. It, it probably would have been hard to talk about those systems because, you know, we didn't have the first part of the games from Xbox and how many times would we, how many times people want to hear about any drama with the Activision deal? Like people are kind of done with the Activision deal. They just want to get it done and move on and stuff. And I, and, and I think that even, uh, even with Sony, that is like kind of suffering with some people because just like Sony, what are you doing? You're, you're holding this up. You're, you're saying this and saying that and people are just kind of like tired of it, you know. Um, with this developers direct that just happened a couple, uh, like a month ago, uh, by the time you guys see this, it's kind of getting, it's being refreshing that we are getting news from Xbox. You know, Phil Spencer, he has a interview with IGN and stuff, and, you know, he kind of admitted or kind of said that, yeah, we were quiet in 22. We didn't really put anything out, but, you know, we want to make sure that our games are high quality, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, he could deliver on that and stuff. So, definitely, with you coming back, kind of to Boss Rush, hear you guys talk about Xbox, you know, having that actual presence of xbox is going to be real helpful and then everything um mm-hmm. it, it's really gonna yeah. it, it really is really it's going to depend on you guys because i could talk about xbox too yes i am the nintendo guy but i have a series x you know mm-hmm. and it to me I, I don't have my playstation 5 yet but it's important that i know what's going on with microsoft because they are part of this gaming industry. They are part of the gaming culture and stuff. And if they go all out and everything, yes, they will take the talk and discussion and, uh, you know, the whatever Nintendo does and stuff. Because 
you know, Nintendo is going to kind of be like quiet a little bit this year, which is fine. I actually tweeted about this. I'm like, if Nintendo doesn't have a big fall, that is fine. Because at this point in time, Microsoft and Sony needs to have a fall. They need to have a big mm-hmm. fall this year, you know? Um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and I mean, in you know, like I know, I I believe a couple of uh, a couple of people in Boss Rush have them, um, but I'll I'll be honest, like right now, the the big talking point, and you see that I see all over social media is a lot of these people, um, showing off the Steam Deck, um, mm-hmm. And showing off like how how well it plays some of these newer games like Dead Space and and stuff like that and uh, you know like uh, the I've seen someone actually comment on on Twitter that you know with with all this that's going on that that maybe Sony and and Xbox need to rethink about maybe looking into handhelds again. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know for sure that that would be an answer for, or uh, something that either of them would really, you know, have to do yet. But, but at the same time, you know, like, yeah, we now we have five G, you know, phones and, and, you know, like, technically those speeds should be good enough to be able to play you know, the game streaming and stuff from Game Pass Ultimate and all that. But yes. there's still those people that want to have it directly on the thing that they're playing it on, you know. And I can see the argument for it. You know, the Steam Deck does does show that, like, you can play these games handheld really, really well. And, um, you know, and and not really then have to worry about a internet connection necessarily, but yeah, I don't know. I I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's probably going to be like for, especially for Xbox, it's going to be like VR. I don't, I don't think unless they're, they really, really get pushed into a corner where they really think that, okay, we, we really do need to look into this. I don't think they're going to do anything until they get to that point as far as making something handheld. Um, you know, but then again, who knows? They they, they could just be um, being silent about it and secretly are working on something, you know, because developers like to, and companies like to do that too, where they'll, they'll kind of make you think that nothing's going on. And then next thing you know, they're like, oh, by the way, <laughs> we <laughs> got right. this. You know, so, you know, who knows, but I, I'm not too worried about that, but, but yeah, that's been the big thing lately, you know, and like you said, like a lot of the, a lot of the consoles and stuff are, they've got stuff coming out, but it's not, it's been, you know, pretty slow and steady for the most part, but yeah, like the, I think, I feel like the, the uh, Steam Deck has kind of been taking all the the uh attention right now because that's the shiny new thing you know so all right well before we get back to more gaming talk um i gotta ask you what have you been doing on the music front like have you been producing have you had the passion to arrange um like what have you been doing on the music front Um, I'll be honest, I haven't done a whole lot. Like, you know, I've had like inspiration and mm-hmm. like had thought about do, you know, doing stuff and was kind of messing around with with stuff a little bit. Um, but I do I do actually have a project that I'm that I'm going to work on. I kind of force my not force myself. I want to work on it. Mm-hmm. But um <clears throat> yeah, we we got to go over some stuff and figure stuff out. Me and my, my sister, um, are, are gonna, um, in a couple of week weeks, uh, we're going to get together and she's kind of wanting to, she, so she never really listened to podcasts. Yeah. Um, but like she started, you know, going into therapy and stuff and, you know, and then, 
kind of in therapy, like, you know, was suggested some podcasts and things like that. And so then she did check them out. And now, like, you know, like everyone, I feel like once they try their first podcast and they find something that they really like, then they just start looking for everything that they like, you know, what else can I find? Oh, and, you know, like I had like 40 different podcasts on my podcast uh, app that I that I use to listen to stuff. <laughs> and I never I never listen to most of them, but they're there if I ever want to, you know, change it up a bit. So. So as far as the music goes, like, yeah, my sister is actually thinking about doing a podcast. And so we're going to, I'm going to work with her, um, a little bit and try to, try to, you know, help her with any knowledge and stuff that I have. And I, I told her, you know, feel free to ask Ed or, or Corey or whatever too, if she has questions about things, um, and yeah, she could, so she wants to kind of do something with podcasting. And so I, you know, I was gonna try to make an intro and stuff for her. So then she doesn't have to worry Aww. about looking for royalty free music or whatever to use. And, and then I can find, I can make something that's unique to, to her show, you know, her show, show only. And, uh, and then she'll have something that that's hers that she can use uh, for her show. Um, I told her today, I said, just give me some stuff that, you know, like to inspire, like what kind of mood or sound you want, you know, me to kind of set for, for your intro and stuff. So, so that's kind of my project that I'm, I'm taking on and going to start here. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited to that, about that and helping her out, um, with getting her, her stuff hopefully started, um, soon, soon, you know. Is she nervous? Um, um, a little bit. I think she. I think right now it's just like she knows what she wants to do, mm-hmm. but but it's but she's never really done podcasting or anything before. Um, but she she knows kind of what she wants to, it to be about. But it's I'm gonna help her with the like you know like trying to you know you know like figure out like do you want you you know like have have it segmented where where you have like different parts of it or something or you know like you know like just kind of like have see what she has for ideas and Mm -hmm. you know if if i can you know if i have any input or things that i can help her with um but yeah and it will be you know i'm i won't say too much about it um but she it will be like an interview style kind of thing um but and she wants to kind of focus a little bit on uh on mental health you know like Mm -hmm. for that to be a bigger focus and um you know and i kind of talked to Corey about like you know like if she does end up you know starting making a show and stuff they talk about you know if she wants to if she would be interested in, in like being in our, uh, like friends of the, the network kind of area, you know, to help, help, help with, with, you know, getting started at least a little bit. And, you know, and I, and I, I said to her and I, you know, and, and people who've listened to our shows for a long time, we, we really do always try to talk about, um, about hard topics maybe sometimes or, or like, you know, about, about people's mental health and stuff like that. And I think, I think, you know, like doing a podcast about that kind of stuff is, is very valuable. Like, I I think that would be a, you know, a really, a really good thing, you know, to, to be able to help promote, like, you know, just because we've always said, like, we, we promote people, you know, Mm. looking into getting help mental with their mental health and and things like that so well it's it's shows like that about mental health and therapy it's it's very helpful to people because they're able to tell their story their life story um Mm -hmm. be able to give out you know tell the secrets that they were hiding behind but you know feel free that it's out because I think what a lot of people don't realize is that there is someone out there who is 
who understand I said who is who understands what someone else is going through because they're going through that or they've been through that. So they can recognize the signs, they can recognize the feelings and the emotions and stuff. And if it's a podcast that's going to help somebody and get them to listen, you know, it's not to force people to listen or anything, but you know, if it if it catches your ear, you want to hear their story and recognize it. People will go out there and recognize it and hear it. You know, like you said, mental health has become a bigger thing because people have, you know, accepted it and expressed that I am. I I have problems. I have issues. I have troubles, and I need help. You know, um, mm-hmm. back in the day, you didn't get help like this. You know, uh, yeah. there's the, there's a lot of men who you know who have a lot of issues and uh, who has to go. You know, they're scared to go to therapy because of sometimes what they were taught. They were just like, you have mm-hmm. issues. You deal with your issues. You don't go out and go see a therapist and stuff that's not manly or and things like that or that's not masculine and nowadays it's just like people who struggle if they follow that they're harming themselves you Mm -hmm. know and you don't have to harm yourself it's okay to go to a therapist and and talk and you know it go out and get some help and everything because people want to see you better people want to see you live your life they don't want to see you hiding in the shadow or being afraid and stuff you know or even harming yourself and everything that's why it's kind of important that people who need you know who need therapy or who are you know learning to be a therapist and stuff like that that it's important because as as we get older and time continues to go on mental health is going to mental health is going to jump it's it really is going to yeah. jump the like a lot of trauma and everything that is going to jump and if we don't have a space to talk or get that out it's going to get worse yeah yeah and i mean you know honestly um ther- therapy and and you know and talk the people that we talk to um you know like uh they're usually people that went through a lot. Like they, they, they're basically their life experience is Mm -hmm. what helped them be able to sit down and talk with you about your problems and help you work through them because they've had to do that themselves. Or a lot of them actively are doing that themselves. Um, but but they have the tools that that they know work and and they want to share them with you you know like essentially is, is how it is what it really is is it's you know there's tools there's things you can do you know like um you know there's science science based you know things that that they will tell you like you know just you know the whole you hear people talk about writing writing like three things down every morning when you wake up yeah. right three things down and positive about yourself that you love or or whatever like that that releases you know like the chemicals in your brain when you do that that make you feel good like and yeah. and so just doing that every day you're training your brain and you know, you're, you're making yourself feel good and you're, you're focusing on the positive things about yourself and, you know, like building that relationship with yourself and, you know, and proving that and just hugging yourself and saying, I love you. Like that releases the same chemicals that, that get released when someone else hugs you and says that, like, because we, we are capable of being all we need to be happy you know and it's, and it's just sometimes it's hard to see that but but we you know like we we can be happy and make ourselves happy and we shouldn't ever you know expect someone else to make us be happy you know like that, you need to be happy. I, I think there's a level of acceptance that's part of mental health it's just like mm-hmm. Accepting yourself, um, you know, yeah. 
I think you spoke about this on uh, After Dark, um, of, of things that you just had to accept. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you going through your divorce and everything. And I know me and you, we talked throughout all of this and um, just the roller coaster of emotions, <laughs> I shall say. Yeah. Um, yeah. It took it took you a while to accept some things, and but I think once you accept it, you started learning how to move on. You know, and I think when you get to that level of acceptance and you're able to work on yourself to like help you move along you start seeing the things that you were really worried and concerned about kind of like fade away in a sense. In everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, in my particular situation with my divorce and, you know, and I, and I kind of set on that, that show of what I, you know, what I think the problems were, um, you know, like when, when, when she first wanted to, you know, go, we were first going through the separation and stuff and, and it was all just kind of thrown at me. And I was just kind of like, you know, like, wait, what's, what's going on? Um, you know, like realizing how foggy and just like at first, like my first reaction was, what did I do wrong? Like trying, you know, worrying about did I, you know, what did I do? Did I hurt her? Did I, you know, like, you know, like I, I felt bad and I was worried and, you know, like didn't, wasn't thinking about myself at first Mm -hmm. because I had just spent so many years just thinking about, you know, her and, you know, eventually, you know, there, there, I did kind of start to try to focus on my happiness again because I was noticing that I wasn't happy. And I think I knew that <clears throat> like, finally I was seeing, okay, like this, this is not, this is not right, but I still wanted to try, you know, to, to fix, fix things. But then, you know, then it took some time of kind of just stepping back and really being with my, you know, with my thoughts that, Hey, wait a minute. Like once the fog started to clear and I could see things, more clearly of all the things that I was going through and the things I was doing and just not feeling appreciated for all the things I was doing. I was just like, wait a minute. Like, why, why should I be the one feeling bad about this? Like, like, what about all this stuff that, you know, like that I've been going through, you know, like trying to like say to myself, like, yeah, like you know, there's a lot of stuff that she needs to answer for. And, you know, and then I started bringing that stuff up. And of course, didn't none of it ever really got very far because she really, I don't think cared too much about Mm -hmm. my feelings or any of that stuff. And, you know, and looking back, there was many times that I said things. And it was obvious she didn't care about my feelings because nothing changed. And if and if someone really, really cares about you, and you know and and your relationship is going bad if they really care about you then they would want to hear you out of what's hurting you and what what you'd like to change in the relationship and that just wasn't happening and it was you know so i had to come to the conclusion and accept that yeah like as far as i know that this person is basically was fake since the beginning you know, and, and I just have to accept that, you know, like, I, cause there is, cause I'm not going to get any, there's no, there's not going to be any, uh, you know, uh, anyone saying, yeah, or she's not going to say, yeah, I never did, you know, care, you know, there's not going to, I'm not going to get that out of her, but mm-hmm. so, yeah. You know, like there, there's a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff. But it, 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 it kind of, and I know some people are going to be like, "Wait, what?" But it kind of feels like a talk the walk kind of discussion. And and, and the mm-hmm. reason why I say uh, it feels like a talk the walk this, uh, kind of discussion is because in some of the games that we play on talk the walk, the decisions that we make or the storylines that we are learning 
acceptance is part of that. There's things that we have to accept that, you know, uh, so me and Nelly, we play Detroit Become Human uh, for PlayStation 4. And we were talking about the things that we were going through in that game, the emotions that we was feeling because of the choices that we made and stuff. And mm. playing games like that, you got to face some realization that, you know, yes, even though this game has a path that is designed for you to follow, your choices do affect and change that path. And of course, there's the flow chart that shows you what your choices lead to and everything. But if you made a bad choice and stuff, you have to accept that. If you made mm-hmm. a good choice, you have to accept that. If you made a, well, it is what it is kind of choice, you know, you have to accept that. And I think in life, definitely with therapy, of course, therapy is not a talk to walk kind of mom and stuff. But it is part of acceptance and and everything. And I think, you know, we all go through something that we have to, you know, kind of accept. And hearing that podcast about mental uh, health or uh, there's a podcast on Earwolf uh, where, uh, like, there's an anonymous caller that calls this host and starts talking about stuff that they've been through or you know, things that they had, you know, there was one that, uh, it was a phone call between the host and two twins and <laughs> talking about mm-hmm. their life there. But it was mm-hmm. also talking about someone dying on somebody or um, someone being abused. Uh, there was one about a guy who was a school teacher, uh, a black school teacher and everything and the stuff that he has to deal with. And it's just like, there's so much stuff that I think, when people want to talk about um, about things, it you know there's some stuff that deals with that acceptance that deals with mental health and everything that deals with just life in general and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think you know here at Boss Rush Media that you know we want people like we said we want people to be themselves and everything. And you know th- there are some requirements that you know that we ask of some people and everything. Um, because we want stuff to be fun and be entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we also want things, you know, to make, to educate people, to make people, you know, hear our opinions on things to, and whether they agree or not, be able to get a, uh, they hear a voice and give a voice to them and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah and and yeah and it's usually it's about it's you know it's just about starting a conversation yes you know like that that's really you know that's what we're doing we're just starting a conversation we have our our opinions about things and you know like you said whether you agree with it or disagree like that's not the point the point is, is like okay well if if you disagree or you agree well then you know talk about that talk about talk about what you know like what your thought is on that and you know we have now like the discord and and things where you know people can go and and talk about you know talk about things and start threads Mm -hmm. if they want or whatever and you know like yeah i mean there's there's lots of places for people to have opinions you know and as long as you're being you know respectful of everyone um, and they're not, you know, they're not going off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the podcast is called Beautiful Anonymous with uh, okay. Chris uh, uh, Gether. Um, uh, okay. Chris, yeah, Chris Grefter. And it's just like random people calling him up and he's having, a, they're having a conversation. And he's asking some questions and stuff because even him as a host been through some stuff, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I think he had like a drug problem and stuff. And yeah. the the struggles that he went through and, and everything, and I think that's very interesting. That you know, having hearing a podcast about mental health, I uh have an episode on optional opinion about depression with one uh one of my friends that used to be on Twitter uh and everything, um and we talked about and I kind of I think I talked about this on a past podcast, but. We talked mm-hmm. about our optional opinion about depression, more about someone is going 
through having a depressive having depression how do we as a person who you know who recognizes it and wants to say something and wants to help like what do we do because for some people they feel bad for other people who deal with depression because there's nothing that you can do until they personally work it out or come out of their state and everything and i know that may make some people angry for hearing that and stuff but it is true i mean some people really want to say something and they want to be encouraging they want to remind people why they are loved and everything and sometimes Mm -hmm. depression blocks all of that out and everything yeah Um, yeah and you know and and like that that's one of my my secret like it's it's not secret if you know me but but like you know something i don't really talk about much about my myself and my personality is like i i love when people succeed in life and to celebrate when people succeed and you know, like, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't care if I don't, if I don't or do succeed at something, you know, obviously I'll, I'll be excited and happy if I succeed in something. But like, I honestly, like I get a lot of joy out of seeing people that I either know, or even just people that I don't really know that well, like just seeing people succeed in life Mm -hmm. and, and, and not, ever looking at life as some kind of competition where I'm trying to be better than someone or like it, life is just so much better when, when you can enjoy people succeeding as a whole, like, yes, you know, just getting to celebrate with people that succeed and, and get to, you know, do the things or have the things that they wanted. And, you know, and like, you were talking about like, you know, like depression and stuff. And, and like, I, I honestly think that like, I secretly would, would kind of like to be able to work with people who have addictions, like, and trying to, to help people that, that are, that have addiction problems and stuff like that. Because like, so like, if you know, um, I work at, at a hospital and, and I've been working a lot in the ER and stuff. And, you know, in the ER, you, you get to see firsthand a lot of the people that are the different people that are coming there for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times it's either, you know, people that are suicidal or people who are, you know, like coming in on, after a massive binge or whatever on some kind of drug or, or, you know, bad drugs that were laced with something or, you know, like, and seeing, you know, sometimes way too young of kids that are doing hardcore drugs. And it's, it's just, it's really sad. And like, and it's, it's easy sometimes for people to just, want to be like oh geez you know like their parents or or all the you know these people they really need to just get over this and and you know fix fix this problem that they have you know like it's it's really easy to you know look at it and want to blame these people for the mess that they've got themselves into but but like I sympathize with it. Like, you know, this an addiction is is something that isn't easily, you know, like just you just decide one day, oh, I'm just gonna get over this. Like that's something that you get into and you know, and a lot of times it's depression or these these states of mind that we that we can get put into that where we don't have full control over you know, doing, doing things that we know are, are right and wrong and, and to empathize and have compassion for these people that just need help. They just need someone to tell them that they're loved or that they're important or that they're, you know, that they mean something. 
and a lot of these people just have never heard that they they and you know and that's why i try to i just try to be positive even when i feel like crap and and like you know have my days where i'm just like you know life sucks it's i still try to just be positive and Mm -hmm. go out there and you know like sometimes it's a it might be a fake it till you make it kind of situation (laughs) where you know like you're putting on a fake smile or whatever just to get through the day but but if you do that there a lot of the times that you can turn it around and and that fake smile is is real eventually because you're just trying to be positive about things and and I know that's easier said than done again you know like when people are in certain states of mind it it's not that easy like it it seems like Mm -hmm. an impossible feat you know for people but like if you're you know not doing horrible and you're able to you know just put some positive positivity out there like it really does make life so much better like if you just try to be positive about things and look at things from a positive perspective or like i said celebrate celebrate when other people accomplish things and and you know have compassion and empathy for the people that that are that are struggling and and you know like sometimes it it doesn't take a lot to to turn someone around you know even you know like and so yeah like i i've kind of like always had this secret thing of like where i would love to work with with people who have addictions and trying to to help them get through it you know, yeah, and, because it, and I, think, I just feel like there's not a lot of people out there doing that, like actively, like. And I know that stuff like that takes time, you know, um, mm-hmm. like being positive and rooting people on and stuff. Uh, and, and that kind of comes back to gaming in a sense <laughs> before we, we, yeah. we kind of wrap up. Uh, it, you know, so it, someone said that, you know, uh, so just to let, just give people a heads up, you know, for Spoken has came out for PlayStation 5. Uh, the Callisto Protocol came out for uh, all uh, major platforms besides Switch. Uh, and we understand because that's Unreal Engine 5, the graphics that they're going for, is, you know, Nintendo Switch wouldn't be able to handle it. But no one was asking for it for Switch, which is fine. Um, and there's just been so much negativity towards those games and towards people who play those games and it kind of like a lot when you get to a negative state in your life and you spread that around people don't want to be around you or deal deal with you and stuff because it's just like definitely for fictional stuff you know things that don't even matter um the negative emotions is not doing anything you know, it's making, yeah, it, if you're trying to make someone feel bad or hurt them because they love something or they enjoy something that they play written or read and stuff, um, a lot of people just feel like, why are you spending your time on this? Like, what purpose does it serve? You know, if you go, if you're going to be negative about something, you know, for some people, they'd be like, just keep it to yourself don't say nothing if they if someone enjoys a game that you may feel like they don't enjoy just say oh that's cool or just don't say nothing at all look people have gotten on me about grand theft auto (laughs) many many a times and stuff and i have always said that uh because even me and austin we had a discussion about rockstar on his podcast grandma rambles we had a discussion about what do I personally have to give against Rockstar? What, why do I feel very negative to, towards them? And it's not that I don't feel negative towards Rockstar because I think there are talented sometimes the developers there at that company. My problem that I have with them is that something about their games just f- doesn't feel right. And they get a pass uh, with other games who may do something better or who may do something the same, always get like a lower score, lower comments or negative comments and stuff. 
and when it's Rockstar because of their name, they get they just get a free pass from some people. So that's that and everything. But I I don't hate people or I don't be negative people who love those games. I'd be like, cool, you enjoy it, great. Now I will say that there are times that I have been shady, that I have been negative Mm -hmm. and everything. But it's but it's because that I expect something bigger. Oh no, not bigger. I expect something greater from these developers or from this game or for this company and stuff and everything. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say, "Well, you never negative about Nintendo." Yes, I never am negative. Well, I'm gonna say I never am negative, but there are some things about Nintendo that I have a problem with and everything. But I. I'm not going to be super negative and stuff. When I am, ne- I was negative. I talked to you, Jesse, about being negative about the 360. And what was the three? What was my thing with it? It was because the Red Ring of Death. That was it. Mm-hmm. And people had to rebuy it and stuff. That my that that was my thing with it. It's just like, mm-hmm. you know, my negative thing with the PlayStation Four wasn't the games or anything. It was the way that the the system looked like a Kit Kat bar or a George Foreman grill, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, you know, uh, yes, I, I've i been negative about the Uncharted series. It's because of some of the stuff that I felt was a cliche. That was it. Don't hate those games. Don't hate those systems or anything. That was just I had some negative. I just had some negative comments for that that weren't suitable for my eyes. Don't, don't hate anyone who had the 360. Don't hate anyone who had the PlayStation. You know, mm. and, and everything. So, and I have learned over time to be more positive in gaming, be more positive supporter for people who love different games and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm not a sports person, but if someone picks up a MLB 2023 20, and have a ball with it, awesome. You got a mm-hmm. game that you love. Game Pass. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, no, and, and like I think what makes you know some a game good, you know, is if if they are getting people to um, pick the game up, even though it's not something that they normally would care about. Right, like MLB, like MLB, the show you were talking about. Like, I don't care about baseball, and never really cared about baseball games, but that that one in particular like made me want to you know pick it up and try it at least you know and and if and if a game can do that like i i think that's worth more than than um whether it's you know liked by the people who are a fan of that franchise because they're most likely gonna like it anyways because you know they, they like that stuff that's what they want that and they're gonna get it it's the people it's when you can make a game that makes people interested in doing something that they normally wouldn't do or, right. or try a game that they normally wouldn't try and like you know kind of going on the whole the whole negative stuff like like one of the threads that's been going on twitter but it was about the hi-fi rush you know like only being six hours long and it's like what what does it matter like not every game needs to be like 30 hours long or more. Like, I mean, you know, like you can tell right off the bat bat that this game was just going to be a nice compact, you know, experience. Like it's, Mm. I I wasn't expecting it to be a 30 hour long game, you know, like it's just going to be a nice, nice little experience. And, and some of the, my favorite games of all time are have only been like a couple of hours long, you know, and, like I, I don't, I, we do, we need those games too. We don't, cause if every game is 30 hours long, then, then, you know, like some people are going to fall off of it because it's too long or, or now, now you're having to fight and find time to play all these games you want to play. And they're all 30 hours long. And now, you don't have time to play them all because and now we, a new one's already coming out. And me and Corey <laughs> had this. Me and Corey had this talk about. I, I think actually, me, Corey, Stephanie, and Ron. I think we talked about this on the Bosch podcast. Was talking about game lift and stuff. And my thing was just like, why is it 
a problem for a game to be 40 plus hours when you spend that same amount in, let's say, Call of Duty or multiplayer or you spend it in Destiny and stuff. And it's just like those games weren't designed to have that much uh, play time. But you make it personally to have that play time and stuff. So you can, yeah. it's not right to be like, oh, that game is only six hours. I can't believe it's so short. But I'm just like, you put about probably that same amount of time per day for this one particular game. Why is that acceptable in this game that's only six hours that may have awesome sort of replay and achievements and trophies and stuff that people want to achieve. Why is that a problem yeah. with that when it comes to the game time? You know, people got on, uh, I'm not going to play a 100-hour RPG like Persona 5, but then you gave Elden Ring Game of the Year because it had that same amount of content, uh, about yeah. 100-some hours. So it's just like, when it comes to game, you know, game time and stuff, it's unfair to judge one game about their game lift and use that same time that you would have put into that game lift in another game that wasn't designed that way. Or that's a yeah. multiplayer only game and stuff. You yeah. know, if you, Yeah, if, and I mean multiplayer though, like you know, like that's the thing is like when you're playing something like like Call of Duty multiplayer, you mm-hmm. got you can't look you can't look at it the same as a regular game. Like like in my opinion you have to look at it more of like like a sport like yes you're gonna you're gonna play you know like however many hours it takes to finish a football game every every day and you constantly keep doing that every every day that you have you know that you have to play football like you're you're playing those kind of games to try to improve and and you know, like try to improve your skills, try to, try to get better. And, you know, like it's, it's more of a strategy type thing, I think, you know, and, and so it's different. Like, like I, I get it. I get it. Like, you know, like if you're, if that's not something you're really into, like Mm -hmm. it, it does, it does seem like a waste of time. But it's, but I think, I think it's the same way that like, I, I like watching football, but man, I would never waste my time playing it like in real life. Like no way. Like that's not, it's, I'm not interested at all, but, so, but, you, like, so funny but you like sitting and watching it for three hours, but you don't want to sit and play it for three hours. You know, that's kind of like the, the argument of like what you're giving is like, <laughs> well, yes. Okay. Well. I I like watching it, but I don't want to play it. <laughs> well, well, this is the funny thing because you mentioned football. So I I just uh I I went to a mass retreat in January, and uh this pastor of uh, my friend um he gave us a sheet you know for us to match things about what we what do we prefer of things that we like and everything, and he mm-hmm. had sports on it. Now I. Am a person who do not like sports. I'm, I love volleyball. I love cheering in pond competitions. That's how I am. I can't help it. But I, uh, if I'm at, I would say this: if I'm at Fridays or I'm at a restaurant and stuff, I will watch a baseball game. I watch a f- uh, football game or whatever while you know eating my food, having drinks, and talking to my friends and stuff. I cannot personally sit down and watch a game because I will fall asleep. Now, I I love Corey to death. Everybody knows. And I love that he talks about the Browns. And I ask about the Browns and everything. I don't know mm-hmm. anything about that team. Uh, I know when they're on their winning streak because they had that one coach. You know, I've, I've, I root on Corey because he loves the Browns and stuff. I, I, I like the New York Jets. Don't know none of the players. Don't know none of the uh, coaches. It is what it is. But if anyone asks about football, bam, I like the New York Jets and stuff. I can't watch sports at all because I would literally fall asleep. A volleyball game, I could sit down and watch because it's unpredictable. It's very action-packed and everything. Mm -hmm. And even though I might not know the players, I might not know the school or anything, sitting down and watch that ball go back and forth to see 
who's going to get the point. It's, it's, there's so much anticipation. Plus, I played right about high school. There's so much anticipation and stuff. It's really cool to see how that all goes down. You get into it. Um, mm-hmm. When it comes to like the palm and chilling competitions that I watch or I try to watch, I love the choreography. I love, you know, the placements and everything, and maybe even the mix of the music because that's kind of what I did in high school and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's like, but like the hardcore sports don't know nothing about basketball really don't know nothing about baseball and stuff you know if if uh, you know the super bowl has happened uh before the time of this recording um i don't know who has won or anything i don't know the any dramas i haven't seen the halftime show or anything i normally when it comes to super bowl or anything i normally try to work or dip off to the mall or to the movies like i try to eat uh not erase myself, but excuse myself to be somewhere else so I don't have to be in that environment at all. And that's me. Yeah. That's a personal thing and everything. Well, and and then the, on the opposite side of that, that's the perfect time to go to the grocery stores when, when the football games are on because no one's there. They already went. They already exactly. went before the game started. <laughs> That's that's when I'll be go, going out and you know searching for for all the single women who don't care about football. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, full circle. Well, Jesse, I want to thank you for doing this one v one with me. Uh, I'm so happy that we got to catch up. I know we have more to catch up on and talk about and hang out and stuff. Uh, but before we go, uh, welcome back to Boss Rush. Um, hopefully, uh, which, whatever you do next, you know, we, we're going to be there to join you and have fun. Um, but where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me almost everywhere as Phantom NXS, including Xbox and uh, I believe my PlayStation, uh, network is, is also Phantom NXS, um, so I, I think at some point I was thinking about changing it to brn and (laughs) phantom brn you know because nxs was was kind of our at the time when i made that uh Uh. you know the show that we were gonna do but now it's boss rush network so i I might just put uh burn (laughs) 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 at the end but yeah so but yeah it's mostly phantom nxs pretty much everywhere so Yes. And everybody, you know where you can find me at, but I'm just going to say you can find me on Twitter at that retro code. Um, it's just such an honor to talk to you, Jesse, to catch up on. I know we talked about a lot of stuff um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully the stuff that we talked about does is does it trigger anyone or does it seem disrespectful to anyone? Um, we just really want to talk and kind of just like, you know, get to get get back to what we normally used to do and so yeah the mental health stuff is not normally <laughs> what we do in it or anything but just having these like real life conversations and everything um i'm just happy to like i said speak to you jesse and hopefully yeah we'll talk know. more <laughs> with that yeah. everybody have a great week have a great weekend and we'll see you next time on one v one bye everybody Bye. 1v1, the creator interview series, is a product of Boss Rush Media, LLC, and part of the Boss Rush Podcast Supplemental Podcast. This show is hosted by Celeste Roberts. You can also hear interviews from other Boss Rush Media members on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at FairyCrypt. To get updates on the latest episodes, follow the Boss Rush Podcast, Boss Rush Media, and Boss Rush Network on all major social media platforms, or subscribe to the Boss Rush podcast feed in your favorite podcast application. Join the Boss Rush Network Discord and Facebook groups to interact with other friends and fans. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.